4.2 objectives. Hopefully you see a common theme all the way through here. This whole um, um, section is about logarithms, okay? So one and two we're going to kind of do together because it's, as you can tell, it's kind of a back and forth, right? Going from logarithmic to exponential and then back and forth from exponential to logarithms. We need to be able to evaluate logarithms. We need to be able to use basic logarithmic properties. Graph logarithm, logarithmic functions. Find domains of logarithms. Use common logs and natural logs. Okay? So logarithmic to exponential. First of all, here's the basic rules. If it says y equals log base b of x, that's obviously logarithmic form, right? Because it says log in it. If we want to move it to exponential form, b to the y power equals x. So this is logarithmic form. Oh my goodness, I can't spell today. L-O-G. A R I T H M I C, and this is exponential. Okay. So two equals log base five of x is exponential form. Can you write it into exponential form? Excuse me, yes. This is a logarithmic form. Can you write it in exponential form? Well, the base over here is the base over here. The answer is the exponent, and the argument is what's left. Yes? Log base m of 2x equals 7. Can you write that in exponential form? Well, the base, the answer, equals the argument. Okay? 6 squared equals 36. Can you write that in logarithmic form? The base here is the base here of 36 equals the exponent. X to the fifth equals 25. Can you write that in logarithmic form? Log base here is the base here of 25 equals the exponent, 5. Got it? So to evaluate logarithms, now we talked yesterday in section 4.1 haha, about evaluating functions, right? And if we're evaluating functions, we just take what it wants for x and we plug it in, right? Well, evaluating logarithms is a little different. Log base 2 of 16 equals x. Can you tell me, it's almost like solving, right? We're almost trying to solve it when it's asking us to evaluate. Because this is something we can easily figure out, okay? Because if I rewrite it into exponential form, I get 2 to the x power equals 16. Do we know what x is? 2 to what power equals 16? 4. Okay? Now, another way to look at that is by using some of our logarithmic properties. Log base 2 of 2 to the 4th power. Isn't 2 to the 4th power 16? Right? Well, remember, if, if you will, properties of logarithms, if the base and the base are the, are the same, what's the answer? The exponent. Okay? So there's a way to rewrite this problem so that the evaluating becomes really much easier, isn't there? Okay? Log base 7 of 1 over 49. Could I rewrite that into a way that is easier for me to see? Well, I could say <clears throat> 7 to the x power equals 1 over 49. And we know that 49 is 7 squared, right? But since it's in the denominator, 
Remembering my exponent rules, what makes something go to the denominator? A negative exponent, right? Or from the very beginning, I could have rewritten this as log base 7 of 7 to the negative 2 power. And when the base and the base are the same, the answer is the exponent. Are you remembering any of this? Log base 25 of 5. Well, I could rewrite it in exponential form. 25 to some power equals 5. How do I get to 5 from 25? I could square root it, right? And we know square rooting is the same as raising to what power? 1 half. I could have from the very beginning rewritten, as, rewritten this as log base 25. Huh. How would I rewrite that? What do you think? How can I rewrite 25 as Right? Couldn't I do that? 25 to the 1 half, isn't that 5? And now my bases are the same, so my answer is just my exponent. Now this one we're not going to worry about rewriting so much. I just want you to remember some of these rules real quick. Log base 2 of the fifth root of 2. That could be log base 2 of 2 to the 1 fifth power, which, is, which would just equal 1 fifth, since the bases are the same. Okay? So thinking along that line then, what's log base, oh geez, what is log base 7 of 7? Because I said if the bases are the same, what's the answer? The exponent, there's not one. Well, there is, right? There's just one, yeah, absolutely. Log base 5 of 5? Also 1, right? I could write 12 or 15 more examples, but if the base and the base are the same, what's the answer? the exponent, which in this, these cases are just 1, right? So what about these? Log base 4 of 1. 4 to what power gives me 1? Four to what power will always give me 1? The only power I can raise stuff to that will give me a 1? This is a zero, right? Unless it was one. One to the first power would just be one, right? Okay. Log base seven of one. It would be zero because anytime my argument's one, the only power I can raise any base to to give me a, an answer of one is going to be zero. Okay. So let's talk about some of the properties. Objective number four talks about using basic logarithm properties. We've already used some, but let's talk about this one. Inverse property of logarithms. Okay. The inverse property of logarithms said four B is greater than zero and B not equal to one. log base b of b to the x equals, what do you think? Yeah, x for sure, right? The base and the base are the same, so the answer is the exponent. But it also says that b raised to the log base b of x is, the same way right here is if the bases are the same, the answer is the exponent. If these bases are the same, the answer is x. Okay? 
So for example, log base 7 of 7 to the 8th power, that's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Not even just kind of like, but exactly like it, right? So what's the answer? 8. But what they're also saying is 3, log base 3 of 2x, when the bases are the same, what's the answer? Yeah, whatever's there. Okay, in this case, 2x. Okay? Do you understand that property? You okay with that? Okay, let's talk about graphing logarithms real quick. Now, I don't think you'll have any problem with graphing logarithms, like literally at all. Because when we talk about graphing logarithms, we're talking about transformations. A log base B, BX plus H plus K. That should be minus H. Can you fix that, please? Minus H, X minus H, okay? What does the A cause to happen? It's outside of the logarithm, so this causes a vertical change. And to stretch or compression by whatever, whatever factors there, right? It can also cause a reflection over the x-axis if it's negative. Remember that? Now, sometimes people want to know what does this do to the function? Well, if I'm talking about log base 7 of x compared to log base 7 of x plus 5, the log base 7, that's part of the parent. Okay, it doesn't change <clears throat> the shape of the function based on the parent. You could have log base 7 of x compared to log base 2 of x, but those are completely different parents. So don't really compare those two very often, okay? What's next is the b, okay? This causes a horizontal change. And since it again is a multiplier, it also causes a stretch or compression. But it's like backwards of what you think, right? For this A, if that's a 2, <clears throat> we know that that's a stretch by a factor of 2, right? Because that value is greater than 1. But if you have a 2 right here, that's backwards of what you think. It's not a stretch. It's a compression. Do you remember that? Okay, next we have this h. Again, that's inside the function, so that's causing a horizontal change. But it's a horizontal shift because it's being added or subtracted, okay? And horizontal, remember, is going to be left or right. But again, it's backwards of what you think. If this is x plus 4, it's going to move left 4. If it's x minus 5, we're going to move right 5. All that leaves is our k. Our k is outside of the function, so we know that causes a vertical change. It is added or subtracted, so it is a shift. And since it's vertical, it's either up or down. But because it's a vertical change, it's going to be exactly what you think. If it's plus 2, you know you're going to move up 2. Okay? Any questions about graphing? You guys are super good at graphing, especially at transformations, so you okay? Our next subjective talks about domain, finding domain of logarithmic functions. Okay? So... Miss Kingston? Yes? Do you have Daniel? I do. Okay, sign the office, please. He's leaving. Yes, I will. Thank you.
Daniel, you gotta go to the office. You're leaving. I'm gonna cry the whole time you're gone. When we talk about domain, we've got to talk about what the graph looks like. Okay? So I'm going to try to draw logarithmic function. See ya. We'll say that this is log base 2 of x. Okay? Why did I make sure to go through this point right here? Do all the parent functions of logarithmic our logarithms go through that point? Well, that's x equals 1, right? Log base 2 of 1 is going to equal what? What does anything log base whatever of 1 equal? 0. That's why I was really sure, really uh, specific about going through that point right there. Okay? So what about my domain? How far left does it go? All the way to zero, right? Does it cross over this axis? No, what's actually happening at this axis? An asymptote, right? Doesn't ever get it doesn't ever get to zero and it doesn't cross over the axis, does it? So in um, inequality notation, we say x is greater than zero. In interval notation, we say parentheses. 0 to positive infinity. Not a bracket, because like I said, it doesn't get to 0. Okay? If you're asked to find the domain of, of any random function based on like transformations and stuff, like for instance, f of x equals log base 2 of x plus 4, well, x plus 4 is a horizontal shift, right? And it's moving to the left 4. So this time, where's the domain? We moved everything to the left 4, so everything is going to be greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than or negative 4, right? Or from negative 4 to infinity. Dang it, minus 5 plus 2. Log base 2 of x minus 5 plus 2, what's the domain here? I scooted over to the right 5, right? The whole function, I moved over to the right 5. So the domain this time is greater than 5, right? Wait, what is the... Th I moved it up 2, right? Does that matter in the domain? No, not at all. So 5 to infinity. It's not equal to, remember, because of the asymptote that goes right there. No, I crossed it out, and now it just looks like a bigger one. Sorry. I don't have any white out. Now that, that just looks like a mess up now, right? Okay. Yeah, there's not brackets right here because it's just greater than. It doesn't ever get here because there's an asymptote right there. So we can't ever say greater than zero. It can't ever say bracket zero because it doesn't ever get to zero. Okay? Common logs and natural logs. Do you know? Do you remember the difference between the two? Log base 10 of x is the common log. So a lot of times we just write log of x. We don't even write a base. That's the common log log base e of x. We don't write that because we're not silly. We write natural log of x. Natural log just means log base e. This one's called the common log. It's the, the base used most often. This is called the natural log. It's a base of e. Okay? All the same rules applied that we talked about before. Like if I say the natural log of e, that would be right, like writing log base e of e, that's just going to equal 1. Okay? But all the others, all these other rules that we talked about apply with natural logs the same as they apply with logs. Okay? Any questions?